Up next, Nanette Kasswagner and Dr. Laura Burke from the School of Nursing at the University of Pittsburgh discuss e-health approaches to promote a lifestyle change. You know, Dr. Burke, there's been so much interest in lifestyle change and so much difficulty in effecting it. What is the spectrum of electronic equipment or materials that you see as being potentially useful in this regard? There's a wide array of devices available today to assist individuals from the basic desktop computer all the way out to the smartphone. And in between, individuals could be using iPads, that's another one, personal digital assistants. Now, personal digital assistants as a standalone device actually no longer available. That's how quickly the technology has moved. They are obsolete, but a PDA is actually incorporated into a smartphone today. So it's two major devices, telephone and PDA in one device, which is actually very supportive since individuals prefer to only carry one device. Well, at this meeting, you talked about two studies that you've undertaken. So if you would explain to us how these devices are used to promote lifestyle change. My studies focus on cardiovascular risk reduction in a population of individuals who are overweight, obese, and low individuals with a body mass index between 27 and 43. Predominantly women, we try very hard to get men enrolled, but we usually only achieve about 18%. Otherwise, it's fairly diverse with approximately 25 to 30% minority representation. And how we use these devices, in the first study, we used the PDA. The purpose of the study was to compare the use of an electronic diary compared to a paper diary. And then the third group had the electronic diary plus feedback messages that were delivered to the individual in response to the information they entered into the PDA. And how we used the PDA was for self-monitoring diet and exercise. So central to weight loss treatment, or actually most behavior change treatment, is self-monitoring. The individual needs to become aware of their behavior before they can make changes in it, and then the interventionist can work with the individual to look at their behavior and identify problems, barriers, et cetera, and help the individual problem solve. So the primary purpose was for the individuals to record either in the paper diary or in electronic diaries, use the database that was available, and they enter the food intake. And so there's an extensive list of thousands of foods in the database. So with the electronic diary, what makes it very easy, the individual just has to search for the food, enter it, put in the amount they eat. It automatically then enters the calories and fat grams, so they get that feedback instantly. Whereas if they were using a paper diary, they have to look this up in a book we give them. And then also the other beauty of the electronic diaries is that it calculates subtotals as they go throughout the day. And individuals have to do that manually if they're using the paper diary. So in that sense, everyone who's using an electronic diary always gets feedback right away. The little screen shows what their daily goals is, where they are throughout the day. And how did patients respond? Because this electronic format was probably unique to their experience. Yes, it was. None of them, I don't think, had used a PDA previously. The majority of them had phones. But when we started this study, that was six years ago. We completed the trial a year ago. So they had not used this type of device before. And actually, there were very few software programs available. And the one we used, because it included a date and timestamp, was not the most user-friendly compared to what is available today. But the individuals, the majority of them persisted. They learned how to use it. We had a PDA simulator so we could have on the screen how when we taught the individuals as we were teaching them what buttons to tap or push or whatever, it was always on the screen so they could always see everything we were doing and then they could work with us. We had two individuals who had not had any prior experience with computers or smartphones or any devices like this, and they were able to learn very well. We did not identify any differences among genders, age groups, ethnic groups, etc. Everyone was actually able to adapt it. And there obviously some people just loved it because, for one thing, it's socially acceptable. You can use electronic diaries and nobody knows what you're doing, whereas when you pull out a little paper diary in your calorie counter book, everybody knows what you're doing. So that was definitely one plus. The automatic calculation throughout the day allowing the person to see where they were was another benefit.
we know the purpose of the research is to translate it into real world applications. And having spent several years doing this, where do you see the applicability? How do you see this being used commonly in clinical practice? How I see this as a benefit is almost like the person could have a little coach in their phone. Industry is far ahead of science. Industry sees that people really are like this. There are many people I meet in social settings that tell me that they're self-monitoring their exercise or their diet and whatever program they've downloaded, and there are new apps every day. So that individuals like the idea that they can self-monitor, get feedback, see how they're doing, particularly see how they're progressing if they develop the program. So for some individuals who are very able to self-direct themselves to see the scale is a little bit higher, I need to take off 5, 10 pounds, they can do that themselves. For the individuals who may have more of a serious weight loss issue or who really need the guidance of a professional, this can augment the professional. So maybe the individual is seeing a primary care person, maybe a dietitian, but this is something that they can take with them every day. And then after they complete a program, either in the clinical setting or through research, again, this is a tool they take with them. This will be always with them. Whereas currently, when the person ends a study, completes a study, that is one of the issues. They're out on their own, and this is why we see a relapse among about 80% of the individuals who begin to regain weight because they're not continuing to do the, some of the interventions that support the habit of a healthy lifestyle. So this essentially is lifelong learning and lifelong monitoring for people who have a weight problem. Absolutely, and we try to convey that to individuals. This is not a quote-unquote diet. This is a change in lifestyle, and this is something you will need to continue for the rest of your life. Otherwise, you, know, you will have a regain. And the observational studies that look at individuals who are successful at losing weight We'll always identify one of the strategies is monitoring their weight and their behavior, eating and exercise. For some every day, for some individuals, as they see that they're backsliding, then they pick up the self-monitoring again. This is fascinating because it's a very different approach to addressing what is becoming a ubiquitous problem of obesity and overweight. Thank you very much. You're welcome, Dr. Wing. It's been a pleasure.